Hey everyone, welcome to Making Sense. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I really do appreciate seeing you here. And if this is your first time checking out my channel, welcome aboard. Today, we're going to talk about 10 fragrances that remind me of specific people in the fragrance community. Stay tuned. Today, we're going to talk about 10 fragrances that remind me of different people in the fragrance community. Now, I'm not going to go into fragrances that are created by either content creators or other people in the industry. Um, I'm not going to go with like uh, any of the stuff from Jeremy, Office for Men, so on and so forth, any of the stuff from Stephen and Essence, Novitas Parfums, or uh, Dan Naughton, Gravitas. And I even was about to put uh, Fragrance View. I was going to put his fragrance on there, but I decided to leave that out there as well. I have the one from Centauri Parfums, but I wanted to leave those out of the mix because everyone will affiliate those with those specific people. Um, if I do have any that are connected to someone that was either the perfumer, the owner, or anything like that of a brand, that's because there's something else or another reason why the fragrance reminds me. So let's dive right into this. So the first one we're going to go into, uh, I've talked about before my channel, it's not, or it never was like my favorite fragrance or anything like that. Um, over the years, it's become more appealing to me and now I actually enjoy the fragrance and especially when I affiliate with this specific person. So I'll look at this one here. It's Versace blue jeans. This fragrance right here reminds me of my friend Scott over at 504 man reviews. Um, just a really nice down to earth guy. This fragrance, the storyline behind it, why it stuck out to him was I believe, uh, he wore this the day his son was born. And ever since then, it's just been a staple in his collection. It's a nice, easy reach fragrance. If you like Versace, you'll like this one pretty much. It's like a lot of the other ones where uh, it's versatile. It's nothing too crazy complex. But, you know, if you just want a nice, easy, quick reach, bluish type frag, I say bluish because it's not like a YSLY EDP or Blue de Chanel, but it's another one that has just a really easy, basic uh, breakdown. But it is a nice scent and it's very inexpensive if you want to pick that down to your collection. So, again, fragrance reminds me of my boy over at 504 Man Reviews. We got Versace blue jeans. Now I'm going to throw an honorable mention in here because I don't have the bottle with me over here, but uh, there's a fragrance by Daniel Hossier or whatever you say his last name. And it's uh, Ombre Tabac and Mr. Miami Cuddles. Yep. That one reminds me of you, bud. Uh, again, that's a, a sidebar. I don't have the full bottle with me. It's at my work. I have a little tiny edge left in there. So that's a uh, honorable mention. Uh, the next one. It's going to be this thing right here. It's not a full bottle. This is just the, I think I can get this in focus. This is the container I got. I put it into my own decant, but this is Andy Warhol by Sensual Obsessions. Uh, of course, Sensual Obsessions is a brand by Kevin. Um, just a super nice guy. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, super nice guy, Kevin Holt over there at Sensual Obsessions. Always friendly, talking to different people involved in the community. And not for nothing, we. this is his most well-known fragrance at least up to now. This is just a beautiful like, like plum note or something. Really sweet, but uh, it's not crazy like overly sexy if that makes sense. It's not ridiculously masculine. It doesn't have a bunch of musks or a bunch of tree components to it. It's literally just this beautiful, sweet, somewhat fresh mixed in there a little bit, but it's just this really smooth fragrance that is a very easy reach fragrance in my opinion. And every time I ever hear about Andy Warhol, um, Warhol from Bond Number 9 or anything like that. I don't even think of the original bottle anymore. I just think about Kevin over at Central Obsessions. Wicked nice guy. Like I said, I've chatted with him probably over 100 and something times. Uh, super friendly. And Scott, when I mentioned him, honestly, probably one of the people I talked to the most ever on FragCon. Uh, the next one. This one's a little funny. This is going to be... Well, it's not funny. There's two people this reminds me of, and I can't remember which one it reminded me of first. Uh, the one we're going to talk about is one I mentioned a lot on my channel. Let's get that in focus. Blue Cedar and Cypress by Cremo. This one here, I grab all the time, wear it all the time. Never thought I'd ever even buy a bottle from them. Uh, and now I have five of this specific one. With that being said, I remember going in the store and looking at different fragrances, which I wanted to buy. And I kept hearing about different fragrances from Cremo. So I had sent a message to 
uh, Ross over at TLTG Reviews, and Matt at Georgia Gent, and just said, hey, guys, I'm thinking about trying one of these things. Which one do you recommend? And I believe they both said this one, and they had one or two other ones after it. So this fragrance right here, Blue Cedar and Cypress, which I wore probably the most in 2020, reminds me of those two guys. Matt over at Georgia Gent and Ross over at TLTG Reviews. I've talked to both of them a bunch of different times. Easy to talk to. Cool people. I've done a couple uh, collabs with either Ross um, and Matt, or and I've done a live stream or two with Matt as well. So Blue Cedar and Cypress reminds me of those two guys. And again, this is just... I've already talked about Blue Cedar and Cypress a lot. I feel like I might talk about it a little bit too much because of how much I wore it last year, but it's just easy, fresh, like fur or whatever, whatever that mixer, the cypress that's in there. There's this nice, like, woodsy background with uh, fresh cedar, uh, not cedar, fresh um, citrus components, but it's, it's masculine, but it's not overbearing in any way, shape, or form. Super easy reach fragrance for me, and it does get compliments. It doesn't last a ton of time, but, it, you know, it's so inexpensive cost-wise. I think it's like 22 23 bucks for that thing, so that's why I talk about that so much. Uh, the next one reminds me of the person I got it from, and it's one that I wanted to add to my collection really badly, and recently I did a video with my son Lucas, and we were talking about uh, he kept putting fragrances in front of my face. If you get to see that video, I'm going to try to put, I don't even know what side it goes to, but I'll throw one of those little uh, cards that pop out, the link right there for you. Um, on that video, the way he read this off made me laugh my head off, and I, I've watched it about 50 times. I'm looking at Gucci Poor Home 2. And when he read it, he said, uh, Gucci Poor Homie 2, or something like that. Uh, honestly, probably the cutest thing. Uh, but this fragrance itself... I picked up from a good friend on uh, the fragrance community. His name is Broderick Godbolt. And every time I see this bottle, that's all it reminds me of. Um, it's just, we talked a bunch of different times throughout different fragrance groups, talking about uh, how to get different fragrances at better prices, things like that. A lot of the different stuff that really helps in the community. And in the end, uh, I ended up getting this from him, which was cool because it's something I always wanted to add to my collection. So one more time, Gucci Poron 2. Everyone talks about the T-note in this thing. There we go. And I hope the video comes in clear for you. I keep tweaking the different settings, trying to figure out how to use the different lighting and the camera we're using. It's a uh, different camera this time. I'm shooting on a Sony ZV-1, Z, uh, Zebra Victory 1. This is a nice fragrance. It's discontinued, so a lot of people get aggravated about that when they try to find it. Uh, I was very lucky enough to pick that one up, but that reminds me of my buddy, Broderick Godbold. The next one. This one reminds me of a really cool guy in the community. Uh, he is another fragrance reviewer as well. And I think anyone involved in the fragrance community that knows this person, first off knows he's just a real dude, uh, really just a cool guy, uh, has talked about this fragrance or a similar fragrance from the same house in anything from the house uh, a lot. But it's this one right here. Pasha de Cartier. I'm trying to get in focus for you. There we go. And this is the parfum, but my boy Sam Broom has talked about this fragrance so many times. He has hyped it up in a sense where, and it wasn't even hype. It wasn't even the parfum version. He was talking about the original version at first before it became popular to get the parfum when they came out, you know, last year. Um, gentleman, classy, rich fragrance. Uh, it really is one of the better releases of the last year, especially when you come to designer level. Um, but Sam... You told me to get this one. I think there was a couple other ones. I picked up Ovation from Sean Grunge, Sean based off your review. And then uh, I think you and Joey Cannoli had talked about Stanton, Stanton Black or Stanton. I don't know why my mind can't remember, but Stetson Black. Wow. Stanton. Bad mic. Bad, bad mic. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> this one here, if you haven't tried this, I would definitely get your nose on it. It's definitely a rich one. And for the pricing that it's out there now for, you can get it at discounters and such. I think I paid like 125 bucks for this. I had to have it. It was one of those when you're addicted to this collection uh, game in a bit, when you, you finally find a place that has it and you really want to try it. That was where I was the day that I was able to pick this one up. I think I got it at Macy's or I might have even gone to Nordstrom's to get this. I can't remember. But that is Pasha de Cartier by Cartier. Um, the next fragrance, I actually have it in the box right here still. It's open, but I'm going to show the box first. 
this next one, every single time I walk by this box or look at this box, I think of one person in the fragrance community, super happy, uh, you know, muggle. We're going to run with that. And uh, is this one right here, Enchanted Forest, the Vagabond Prince. So we're talking, yeah, about hills over at the Bureau of Nerdy Fragrance Reviews. I'm going to put this one up like this for you just because it's cool looking in the box. Yep. I need to do a review on this. I got this. And then I technically lost my sense of smell for a little while. So I wasn't able to give it a real review. Right now, my right nostril is a little bit kind of clogged, just being honest with you. But this is a really nice fragrance. I have not worn this enough to give it any real type of review in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to have to do that. I'll actually wear this today. Hmm. But it's just got some, the elements in this are really nice, especially if you like woodsy fragrances or things like that. Um, but Hillary over at the Bureau of Nerdy Fragrance, one of the nicest people in the community as well. Super friendly. She's hilarious. Um, just a, a very positive person uh, to interact with. You know, definitely nice. Uh, you can catch her on live streams, I think, on Friday nights. Most of the time she has when she pops up. And I'll throw a link. If any of these people in this uh, reference have YouTube channels or anything like that, or if they're got their own groups or something on Facebook, I'll try to throw links down below. So you guys have that information. I'm trying not to skip any of the fragrances. All right. So the next one, I think I have four more to go. The next one goes without saying, um, this isn't because of just the name on the bottle. Okay. Uh, and you'll know what I said. You'll probably already know what it is. When I raise this up, you'll be like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. And before I actually show this one, uh, a couple other honorary mentions is anytime I see a Dua fragrance, I think of my boy Mega Dave uh, over at uh, Oh So Fresh, which also helped me learn how to say Oh So Fresh. I always would go, you dip the, or whatever the word was. Um, but Dave over at Oh So Fresh does a ton of Dua reviews um, along with a bunch of other stuff. But anytime I see a Dua fragrance, I'm like, Mega Dave. Like, I mean, that's a pretty cool branding. So great job there, Dave. Um, there's a bunch of other ones too that pop up when I think of different people, but we're going to continue through this. I, I wanted to keep it at about 10. I might throw another couple honorable mentions in there because there are so many fragrances that either remind me of or someone introduced me to. But like I said, I tried to grab 10 with a couple honorable mentions. The next one, I just started going to a description about being very clear why. So let's face it. It says his name on the bottle, right? Zaharoff Signature Perome. It's not because George... Uh, is the person behind this fragrance, not because his name is on the bottle, but because this is a classic gentleman's fragrance. That's just awesome. It is truly a beautiful fragrance. And every interaction I've ever had with George has also been awesome and a truly beautiful experience. Um, just a very nice person that I've talked to a few times, messaging here and there, shares some personal attributes, you know, um, and is just very active in the community. So one of the best ways to have a positive vibe in a community is to be involved. Uh, communication, you know, interaction with others. That is kind of the sense of community. You know, being able to open up, share, and also just be kind is, is one of the best parts. So, and again, I'm not going to go crazy into this. I've already done a full review on it. I love the fragrance. I love the guy. George, hearts up to you, buddy. Um, there you go. And that's Zaharoff Signature Perome. And it could have been Royale and it could have been um, Noir as well. I personally love Noir. I wear that at night a lot. Uh, let's see here. I love all of them, but Signature is key. Uh, the next one. This one's kind of funny to me. Uh, this one here goes back to when I first picked up a fragrance from this house. Um, the fragrance itself is a clone house. This does remind me of two people, mainly because the person that, has, that owns the house um, and... The person that when I first was looking to buy or make my first purchase, uh, literally responded, I think like 15 or more times to the word Luna <laughs> and then Luna and then Luna. And we're looking at genre parfums, Luna Paradisia. Now, <clears throat> this one here is their take on a, uh, I believe a Bikelian fragrance. I'm not going to go into exactly which one. Don't need to do that part today. It's really about the fragrance itself just being a beautiful fragrance. And on top of that, 
the person that first stuck out to me was Doug Holbrook. I don't know if you guys know Doug Holbrook or not, but he was extremely um, active in the genre family Facebook uh, group out there. And he would post Luna, 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 Luna. Anytime you asked what fragrance you should get from a house of genre, it would say Luna. So for me, that was a smart move because I bought Luna based on his review. And I think <clears throat> uh, we used to use the term or used to hear the term go full Doug. And that's when you sprayed like 30, 40 sprays, just crazy all over you. Uh, so that's pretty sick. So shout out to you, Doug Holbrook. And the other one would be Devin, bro. I don't know if it's bro or brew. I think it's bro, but uh, he's the creator behind the House of Genre Parfums. Uh, super nice guy. And one of the things that always stuck out to me with him was the fact that I would see interaction between him and other people online. And he always kept it very professional, just friendly, kind. If someone said something negative, it would be a response of more like, I appreciate you sharing your opinion with me. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy whatever the next thing is or hope you enjoy your life or have a safe day. And it was never negative. I, even with like some stuff I saw that was somewhat rude up there, it was just always kind, just a pleasant response, which in customer service or any type of a thing, especially if you have passion behind building this type of stuff, it could be tough. So shout out to you, uh, Devin bro or bro, bro. And the man, the myth, the legend, Doug Holbrook. All right. Now I believe I have two left to go. The next one, this is, I believe one of my favorite pickups from 2020 and I, I picked it up based off of a review I saw from uh, Ash over at Jensense. So Ashton, uh, this one here, this is Ragba Wood Intense, I'm trying to get this with the reflection. It's hard. There's one light over to the side. If you can see that clear, this one is like a $30 fragrance that just smells much, much richer than that. It's, I mean, if that is the oud attribute that sticks out there, a little bit of the woody components, and again, it's called oud wood intense, right? It's just, it's, man, it just smells so good to me. Uh, he did a review where he was talking about different fragrances. This might have been on his fall list. I don't remember exactly which list it was, but there was this one, and I honestly think I picked up three or four more fragrances from that same review or within the same few days. Um, I know Skywalker was one, or Starwalker, or I think it's Skywalker. I, no, Starwalker. Um, uh, there was one that had licorice in it, or anise, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Lolita Lampica, and there was a couple other ones. And they were all moderately priced, nothing horrible. And I, I picked them all up because I really wanted to try them. I still haven't opened the Lolita Lampica one, so I'll get that one under my nose soon. This one here, though, upon arrival, first sniff, uh, Ragbo Wood Intense. Trying to get that in focus for you. I was just, it's a wow. And especially for the price, the presentation, a nice heavy bottle. I mean, this stuff's not cheap. It's got the, the nice decals on all, all the corners. I'm not going to go crazy into the design, but you get the idea. The cap's nice. It came in a big box. All that stuff costs money. So to sell it for like 30 bucks, I can't get that in focus. We're going to leave that alone. But uh, yeah, he mentioned this one. This is Odo Puff from Concentration. If you're a fan of like Oud for Greatness or any of those niche fragrances like that, this is one you should definitely get your nose on, especially for the price. I mean, it's cheaper than most decants out there. And that one more time, I guess. And no, I showed you twice. That's fine. <laughs> that was Ragbo. Uh, wooden, Oud, no, Wood Intense. Wow, I keep saying Oud Wood Intense. It's called Wood Intense, but to me it smells like Oud Wood Intense. So I gave you my own title for that thing because of what it reminds me of. All right, so last but not least, and again, these aren't in any specific order. These are just the fragrances that I put on my desk because they remind me of these different people. This one here reminds me of being like 18, 19, give or take. I used to wear this a lot back then. I actually thought it was the more mature version of a scent from this house. Um, it is from Abercrombie, and it is Abercrombie Woods. I love the original as well, which you can't find anywhere anymore. Uh, this one here reminds me of Joey Cannoli over at I Am Joey Cannoli. Uh, he does a ton of live streams, a lot of interaction with different people in his, uh, uh, what they call a cannoli mafia or family in a sense, which is basically just all the people that go there and chat and, you know, are involved with his channel. Uh, I think he live streams five nights a week, most of the time, uh, including all different stuff, uh, either mental health Mondays, which sometimes just gets to be an emotional mix where people talk about feelings and ways to cope with different things. You have, I can't remember what Tuesday night is, but it's, you know, whether it's going live, having people jump on a chat. Wednesdays, they have karaoke. Thursdays, 
uh, might be on an Omegle or something running through the crowd. And then Fridays could be a, a mixed jubilation of everything. I don't even know what else you want to call it. But this fragrance right here, because I believe Abercrombie Fierce is either his first or second favorite fragrance. And then Woods kept coming up when we would talk about different things to the point that whenever I see that now, it reminds me of Joey over at I Am Joey Cannoli. There's a second fragrance to also affiliate with that. I told you Fierce was one. I don't have that full bottle at all. But Aqua de Gio, I believe, might be his number one favorite of all time. With that being said, anytime I see Aqua de Gio or think about Aqua de Gio, Fierce or even Woods, uh, Joey pops in my head. Don't know why. I think just because he has passion for those things and passion for life. Uh, that's pretty much the gist of it there. So one more time, just because I always, I believe I showed all of them twice. We got Abercrombie Woods. His, reminds me of my buddy over at I Am Joey Cannoli and uh, all the fam and the Cannoli Mafia there. So that's a wrap. Hopefully you enjoy this video. <laughs> if you did, uh, if, you, if you've tried any of these fragrances, if you like them, love them, hate them, whatever it is, throw comments down below. Uh, you don't even have to do it regarding that. Are there fragrances that you have that remind you of specific people, whether it's friends you made in community, whether it's people outside of the realm of the fragrance community, people that uh, just are your friends or a, a relative or someone that's passed away that just reminds you of, throw the comments down below. Let me know what the fragrances are. Tell me a story behind them. You know, you don't have to entertain me, but you know, it's fun to get to know more about each and every one of you. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos. Uh, if you like the video today, do me a favor, go ahead, click, uh, down below, there's a subscribe button down there if you haven't done so already. I'd love to have you hang around with us. Click the bell for notifications. Along with, if you like this specific video, please click the like button. Uh, these videos are getting drawn out a bit. They've been a little bit longer because I'm just sitting here talking with you and sharing my personal experience and or uh, feelings about these fragrances with each and every one of you. Uh, but again, I love comments down below. Anything you want to comment, let me know down there. Uh, if you want me to do a review on any of these that I haven't done yet, throw that comment down there too. I can absolutely do that for you. And um, that's pretty much it. So I hope you have an amazing day. And remember, if you're making the world a better place, just one spray at a time, then to me, you're just making sense. Until next time.